Okay, so picking up where we left off just now, um, I'm going to go ahead and run this and just show you where we are. So last thing we did was basically wrap up the UI, um, or at least the, the standard UI um, pieces of the puzzle. So um, where we're going to go next is we need to start thinking about um, the information that has to be provided to our app, right, to create the board um, that then, you know, we can shape the, the way the board looks, the user, we can provide the clues, um, and then the user can go complete the board and kind of finish the game. Um, so there's a couple things, and I've already got some some files um, created to do this. Now, you know, there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could have this thing talking to a database that's um, full of, of crossword puzzle clues, um, which, which is simply viable, or certainly viable. You could do, um, you know, just hard code this um, into your application. That's certainly viable. Just, I mean, it wouldn't be very exciting, right? There would always only be one crossword puzzle board. It would always be the same, and once you finish it, it would be kind of anticlimactic. So that's probably not the best way to go. Um, the database side, you could do that certainly. That would be a great way to do it. Um, but for the purpose of this tutorial, that's a little bit more heavy lifting than I want to do. Um, so the way that I went is the third way. And basically, we're going to create a file, just a flat file that that's, you know, pipe separated or comma separated um, that will basically be read in by our application and will basically tell the application how the board should be shaped, what clues should be shown, that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in, I'm going to stop this, and I'm going to go back into my solution explorer here, and I'm going to create a folder um, in here, and I'm just going to call it puzzles. Okay, so if you go to add a uh, new folder, we'll call it puzzles. I'll make it with a capital P, right? And then um, I already, like I said, I already have two puzzles um, sort of already built. Um, so let's go ahead and add existing item. Well, for me, I'm gonna add existing item. For you, add a new item um, that's gonna be, a, you know, it's a text file. So I'm gonna pull in an existing file item. If you wanna, if you feel better creating this um, outside of Visual Studio and then just importing it like I'm doing, um, you can certainly, you can certainly do that as well. Um, so you'll see there's two, Two different text files. I, I call them. You can call them text if you want to. I just put PZO as a file extension, um, just to uh, you know, so that when we actually give the user the ability to load one of these, they don't accidentally try and pull in a text file that's not formatted correctly. That would cause our app to bomb or whatever. So again, we'll just roll with with uh, with that. So if I open up the first one of these. Um, you'll see basically what I have is the first row kind of tells you what each um, sort of value is in in the in the in the uh, text file. So the first thing we're going to get is an x coordinate, a y coordinate, a direction. So down or across, the number, right? So if it's one down or three across or whatever, um, the word that I'm expecting the user to type in, and then the clue that I'm providing the user, right? Um, so basically, what we need to do next is we need to come up with a way to build the word list, right? Um, and, and so there's a couple different ways we could do this. Um, again, this is a little more advanced um, of a project, so we're going to do it probably the best way that should be done in this particular instance. And that is we're going to create a class um, that's going to help us do this, okay? We'll call them um, ID cells. We'll call it that. That'll work, okay? So I'm going to go back into my form, and at the very bottom beneath all of this stuff, you'll notice that this is my namespace, right? Here's my class form one. Inside my namespace, but outside of my class, I'm going to declare another public class, okay? And I'm going to call it, um, what did I say? Uh, ID cells, right? These are the cells that need to be turned white, and these are the cells that um, the user is actually going to be typing into um, when it's when it's time to kind of play the application or play the game, right? So let's do that. All right, so we clear our new class, right? Now we have to have a constructor, right? And this is a very simple class. We're not doing anything fancy here except for creating an object that we can use to store basically all the information we need about one particular clue, right? So um, we're going to have uh, a couple different variables that we're going to need to track, right? If we go back and look at our puzzle file, we have an X, a Y, a direction, a number, a word, and a clue, right? So let's go ahead and just basically make those uh, part of our, our object, our class definition, right? Y string is direction, right? So across or down. Um, what else do we have? Number. 
right? So is it, is it one down, two across, whatever? Um, we're not doing any math with that, so I don't need that to be a number, that an actual integer that can be a string. Um, we're just displaying that on the text or on the on the board. Um, we need to know what the word is, right? And we need to know what the clue is. Cool. Now let's talk about our constructor. So the constructor is going to always have the same name as the class. And we're going to pass our constructor um, the same variables, right? Because we're going to populate our, our object. So int x, int y. Notice these are lowercase. Uh, I'm going to go string d for direction, string n for number, string w for word, and string c for clue, right? And then very simply, we're going to say that this dot x equals x, this dot y equals y. Number equals n. Word equals w. Clue equals oops. There we go. Simple enough. Okay, we have a very basic class. We made all of our our variables public, so we can reference them directly. We don't we don't have to um, create methods that will allow us to get and set these. Um, we're making this very wide open. So this is a little bit dirty, but uh, for the purposes of this, this will work just fine. Okay, We're not using this. This class isn't going to sit anywhere outside of this application. So making everything public like this is not such of a, a bad thing. Um, if we were trying to create a, a, you know, a class that would be you know, part of a bigger package or used um, by a bunch of different uh, potential, by a bunch of different applications, you know, we might be thinking about making these private and, and providing methods that have a little more control for us. Okay. Um, but basically what we've just done there is we've defined um, the class that we need to be able to create our list of, um, of clues, right? Um, so let's go back into, I'm just going to minimize this guy or collapse this guy now. Let's go back in here and um, let's start looking at um, creating a list value or a list object that we can then um, use to basically uh, iterate through when we need to and, and address our clues and add them to our window and that sort of thing. So list is a construct that we can use um, here, right? So we'll call it ID cells. Um, that should work. And then we want to say equals new, or actually I guess I have to give it a name, ID cells. We'll call it IDC. Uh, IDC is our list. Right. Okay. So what we've just done is we've created a. Uh, oops, forgot the prints. We've created a list which is a lot like an array, except for it's dynamic. You can always append. Um, if you look here, um, you know things like um, IDC .add, Right. You can add. Basically, we'll be able to add a list or an ID cell object to it to the list whenever we want to, because we don't necessarily know how many clues we're going to get when we read in the file. Right. Um, Okay, so let's create another method, um, and let's call it uh, build word list, right? Because that's what we need to do next. We need to build our word list because we can't populate um, our our grid and we can't populate our clue list without building a word list. And I just started typing that. I need to put some stuff in front of this, right? Build word list. Okay. Now, what we want to do here is we basically want to tap into the file. We want to open this file. We want to ignore this first line, and then we're going to read in each line, parse it out, create our ID cell object, and then add it to the list that we just created, right? That's kind of what we're going for here. So to be able to read in a file, we need to come up here, and we need to use another library, right? System.io. All right. So let's just create a string variable called line, which is what we're going to use to read in, right? Uh, we're going to say using stream reader s is a new stream reader, and we need to pass it the file. We need to know where the file is. So that's probably another good variable we can have up here. So let's do string, um, and we'll make it public. Uh, puzzle file, we'll call it that. Um, now, once you add something to your your solution, um, the easiest way to reference it is to go ahead and get the, the path of um, 
your startup, your startup path for your application, and then basically add the rest of the directory structure to it, right? So in our case, it's going to be puzzles. Um, I don't know what I call it, puzzle1.pzo, right? So then we can basically, in our stream reader, pass ourselves the uh, puzzle file variable we just created, which will tell us where the path, the file is that we're trying to read. Okay. Um, oops, I don't need a semicolon there, and I need to close that. And then we'll open brackets here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say line equals stream reader s, right? So s is our stream reader dot read line. And basically, if you think about it, the first time we read in a line, what we're going to be reading is this line right here, which isn't really a clue. This is just to help us remember how we need to build our file. So we want to kind of discard that, right? We don't really care about that. Um, so we're not going to do anything with this. Basically, this just ignores the first line, right? What we really want to do is look at everything else. So we'll do a while loop. While that, well, as long as we can still read in lines, right? Because when we get to the end of this file, read line will return null. It'll return a null value. So while that is uh, not null, we're going to basically split up the string. So we're going to create a string array. We'll call it uh, we can't call it S. We'll call it L for line equals line. Remember, line is the line of text we just read in. We're going to split that uh, with the pipe, right? Because if we go and look at our file, each basically value is, is you could use commas, I suppose. I didn't use a comma because I guess it's possible that you could have a comma in a clue. So um, I, I doubt that we would see a pipe in a clue. So I used pipe. You could use whatever delimiter you want to, though, right? Uh, I don't need that there. Um, okay, so we're going to split, and basically what we're going to end up with is an, is an array that, um, you know, at index 0 has a 5, index 1 has a 5, index 2 has a down, has the word down, and you see what's going on here, right? So we're basically just turning this into an array, the line into an array, and then what we're going to do is we're going to carve out um, our array, right, and basically create a new ID cell. Remember that class we created down at the bottom? Um, or actually, we'll go ahead and just add it here. So we'll say IDC dot add, right? And we're going to add a new ID cell, right? Where we're going to pass it the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, the, right? So this gets becomes really easy, right? So L at index zero, uh, L at index one. Let me just copy this and paste it. So one, two, three, four, five, right? So we'll go back and tweak this. Two. All right. Now, the reason this is yelling at me is because it's saying there's nothing that matches, right? We said this is a string array. Um, and what we have here is we need to pass integers. So what we need to do is convert these to these first two arguments to need to be integers, right? Now, this is a little bit sloppy, right? Because I'm not doing any sort of error handling, if you will, right? So this could get potentially blow up in our face if we got our, our file structured incorrectly. Um, but uh, just for the sake of time and getting through this, hopefully in under two videos, um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna kind of ignore that stuff for now and just assume big assumption that uh, you know the the puzzle file is formatted correctly. If it's not, this is gonna blow up on us right here, right? Um, so just know that. And if you run into problems when you run your app and then something's not working right and it's crashing, you're getting exceptions. I would start here first, okay? Um, or you can get smart and you can add you know control. Um, you know, try catch, you know, conditional logic that makes sure that the, the data is correct. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is I need to uh, remember our clues window um, is I need to add a row here, right, for each clue that we read in. So what I'm going to do while I'm in here is I'm basically going to uh, populate that window, right? So clue, what do we call it? Clues, clue table dot rows dot add, oops. 
table dot rows dot add and we're gonna add a new string array which is gonna be what um, L1 or actually I guess it'll be L0 no 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 it's gonna be what is it gonna be we want to know the the number so uh, 0 1 2 3 so 3 it's gonna look like this L3 and L2 and then L5 right I think that's right 3 2 5 okay All right, cool. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build the word list before I initialize the component, okay? So I'm gonna do that up here instead of on load. The reason is, it'll make sense a little bit, a little bit uh, in a while, but basically we're gonna tweak the initialize um, puzzle or initialize um, board method to also cover um, you know, whatever's in these, this clue table that we need to look at. So uh, we don't have to do that at a separate point in time, right? All right, so let's see what we get when we do this. Um, I think all we're going to get, if I'm recalling right, all we've done so far is is the, the puzzle's going to look the same because we haven't changed that. But what's going on behind the scenes is we're reading in the file, and we're also going to add rows to our uh, clue uh, table, right? This is what we should get. Or we might get an exception. Directory not found. Okay, so let's do this. Um, something you got to watch out for with when you add files, um, there's a property called copy to output directory. You need to always copy it if you want it to show up in the build folder. So uh, by doing that, that should solve our problem. There we go. And what you see now is... I have basically the board looks the same, but now I have one, two, three, you know, I basically have the numbers that correspond to um, our puzzle file, right? I have to click on him. Um, you know, there's our clues, there's down across, and there's the number, right? So mission accomplished. Okay. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to start thinking more about how we're going to give the user the ability you know we need to basically those white cells the format cell method that we created in the last video how we're going to use that um, here to essentially change cells white so that we begin to see what we need to see right um, okay so let's think about how we're going to do that um, let's go back in here let's go back into our uh, initialize board method right so here's where we basically set all the background to be black we add the rows we resize the columns and the rows and then we make everything read only right by default what we want to do after that is we want to basically iterate through our list of ID cells that we just imported from the text file right and we want to affect the way the board looks um, in, in that way right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a for each loop that's going to look leak, basically loop through our list ID cells, right? And we'll call it I in ID cells, right? Oh, it's not ID. It's it's IDC. Sorry. There we go. So for every ID cell in our list, remember that list of ID cells. Um, we're going to do something, right? And what we want to do is we want to do a couple things. The first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and set up a variable called start column, right? This is where we're going to basically um, begin our work, right? So if we look at this, what we have is a, a basically a coordinates of where we want to start. So if this is 5, 5 down, we want to start at the fifth column, um, the fifth row, and we're going to be going down in terms of what the, the word should look like, right? So let's come back in here. We'll have a start column, and we're going to initialize that to um, I, right? So this is I, each each ID cell in our list. We'll say I dot X, and then we're going to have a start row equal I dot Y, right? Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a char array. 
and we're basically going to take our word and we're going to store it in an array so that we can we can access it more easily okay we'll say word equals i dot word dot to char array right okay now the fun part <laughs> um, let's do this let's say um, for int j equals zero j less than word dot length right because basically what we want to do now is we want to iterate through our word so that we know how many white squares we need to create right that's the kind of the goal um, and then we'll increment j basically well, then what we want to say is we need to figure out if the word is supposed to go up or down right or I'm sorry uh, down or across so we'll say if I dot direction uh, when we'll say two upper just to make sure we're comparing apples and apples right in case in case you you know if you put uppercase D O W N or lowercase you know if you mixed up the case there we want to do a comparison here so we want to make sure that um, we're comparing apples and apples right so if it's a cross what we want to do is we want to format the cell right remember that method we created down here um, that basically changes it white, makes it, uh, you know, that, so that we can read it or that we can edit it, that sort of thing. We're going to format the cell with starting at start row, which isn't going to change, right? Uh, I have a typo there. So we'll do ROW. ROW. Um, and then we're going to do start column plus J, right? And then word j dot to string. Okay. So what's going on here, right? Basically, what we're saying is that if I let me run this, <laughs> you see we're starting to get some stuff here. Um, basically, what we're saying is that if you if we we know that this says five five, right? That's where we're starting, and we're going. Uh, well, actually, let's do this one. We'll do four five because we haven't done down yet. Let's do four five is our starting point. We're going across, and the word is closed, right? So what we've basically done with that piece of code over here is we've said um, if we go to four five, right? Zero one two three four zero one two three four five. We made that cell white, and then because it was a cross, we're going to basically loop through a, 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 the word closed. And every time we, we go through the word length, right? So we start, this would be C, and then we have L, and then we have O, and then we have S, then we have E, then we have D, right? So basically, uh, we're just looping through the length of the word, right? That's using, we're using that to control the number of times that we loop. And then we're incrementing the column variable every time so that we can go uh, across. Now, if this were down, we would flip this, right? We would increment this and leave this the same, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So if the direction is down, basically what I want to say is down there, and here we're going to have start row plus one, and here we're just going to have the column, right? And if we hit play, um, you'll see that didn't work because <laughs> I did something wrong somewhere. Uh, what did I miss there? Uh, oh, I did plus one. It's plus J. Sorry about that. Um, so let's run that again. There you go. So now we're beginning to see our crossword puzzle, right? Now... We don't have any numbers yet. We don't know where everything is supposed to start. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Um, because I've done this before, I know where everything is, right? So this is C, right? One across, or I'm sorry, uh, two across, right? Is not open, which would be closed, right? Right? So that works. Um, down, two down. Uh, we'll, we'll see one down. Let uh, love is the answer there. Oops. Right? So you can see how this is kind of coming together, right? We can type into this um, kind of as we go, right? We can't type anywhere else. We can't do anything else. It doesn't matter, right? Um, so, so that's progress, right? All right. While we're here, let's go ahead and create a vent called cell value change, right? So, Because what I want to do is I want to do a couple things. Um, when the user puts in a value here, um, I want to do several things. I want to, let's actually, let's go ahead and add that event first. So I'm selecting my data grid view. I'm coming over here to the events and I'm looking for cell value changed, which is right here. All right, so when the cell value is changed, 
what I want to do, a couple things. I want to make the letter uppercase because I'm OCD. And I want it to all look uniform. So I'm going to put this inside of a try-catch block just in case the user types a number or something like that. We don't want it to bomb right there. So what I'm going to say is board and um, data grid view uh, cell event arguments actually can give you the index and the and the, the column index and the row index. So I'm going to say e dot call index and e dot row index, and I'm going to get the value, and I'm going to assign that to the value dot two string dot two uppercase. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to say two string dot two uppercase, right? And all that's going to do is basically when we type in a letter and, oops, what did I miss there? Oh, I didn't do the catch. Just kidding. Um, I don't need to show up any error message or anything like that um, for this. So if I type uh, C or a lowercase v and I go to the next one, you'll notice that when I came off that cell, um, it was validated and it became an uppercase, right? Same thing there. All right, so that's all That's all we did with that. Um, we're going to do something else, right? What else are we going to do? We're going to say um, if the user types more than one letter, um, truncate to one letter. So we'll say if this value dot two string dot length is greater than one, basically what we're going to do is we're going to say Um, we'll get the substring, right, from 0 to 1. Now what this does is basically it says if you type ABC, right, that doesn't make sense. This should be one letter per cell, and you tab, um, it's going to keep the ABC, right? We don't want it to do that. So what we're going to do is change the value. I thought I had done, but I had not. <laughs> there we go. So now if I type ABC, you'll notice I only get an A, right, the first letter. All right. Um, the last thing I think, this is the last thing I want to do. Yeah, the last thing I want to do is we were talking about um, trying to match colors, right, um, or change the color if the answer is correct. So I'm going to copy this guy again. And I'm going to say our comment here is going to be format color if correct. So what I want to say here is if the value um, and again we want to say if it equals the same thing except for instead of the value we're going to get the tag dot two string, right? Then what we want to do, <coughs> excuse me, is change the color, right? Um, so here, let's get rid of all this extra stuff. Go back over there so you can see what I'm doing. Dot style, dot four color, which is really um, the text, equals color, dot dark green else we'll make it red right so you can see I can minimize that so you can see it um, right so what we're saying is if the value that the user types matches that tag remember the tag that we used in the format cell where we set the letter to the tag if that matches, then we're going to turn it green. If it doesn't match, we're going to turn it red. Okay. So, uh, for instance, what did I say? Not opened is closed, and this is two, and you can't see that yet, but we will. So if I type C here, you'll notice it turns red. <laughs> That's not good. Um, if I type L here, it also turns red. Did I not assign that in the, the format? 
Uh, so let's see, is it lowercase or is it uppercase? It's I have it as lowercase, right? So let's make sure that we're comparing apples and apples here. Tag dot to uh, string dot to upper. All right, so let's make sure we have upper and upper. Let's try that and see if we get it. So C, there we go. Now it turns green. All right, if I put N, because that's wrong, you'll notice that turns red, right? So that's kind of what we're going for. So this is a really easy crossword puzzle app, right? We're making this easy on everybody to do, right? When you get it wrong, we show you it's red. I'm terrible at crossword puzzles, so this would be uh, a great feature for me, <laughs> personally. Um, how are we doing on time here? Oh, man, I'm at 30 minutes again. This is going to have to go into part three. Um, so we'll stop right here, right? Um, the last thing we have to really do is get the numbers in here um, and then hook up the uh, open puzzle stuff. So unfortunately, um, this is taking a little bit longer than I, I had hoped for, um, but we'll, uh, we'll come back and do a part three in just a moment. Um, so stand by. See you on the backside.